Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. We will determine theoretical fracture strength in this video. Theoretical fracture strength is the stress required to break the bonding between two plane of atoms. If this is one atom, this is the other atom, this whole set make one plane of atom and this whole set make other plane of atom, then stress required to separate these two plane of atoms is called theoretical fracture strength. If A0 is the equilibrium spacing or interatomic spacing in unstrained condition, now we keep on applying load on this material and we observe that how force varies with rise in interatomic separation between the two plane of atoms. Here the curve is, now we apply the force, this is the A0 point where force is 0. Now we keep on applying force on this material. We can observe that there is an increase in interatomic separation. First of all, there is decrease in both repulsive and attractive forces. As there is decrease in both attractive and repulsive forces, but the decrease in repulsive force is rapid compared to attractive force, the net force curve rises. Finally, there comes a point when the repulsive forces become negligible and at that point the net force curve reaches its maximum and that is called theoretical fracture strength if divided by area. Now after this point, if the force is further applied because the repulsive forces have become negligible, the net force curve follow the attractive force curve behavior and finally reaches to a point where the force become negligible at an infinite separation of atoms. Here if we observe the point where the interatomic separation is A0, the force is 0, here the potential energy is actually minimum. If we observe the curve of potential energy versus interatomic separation at A0 that is the equilibrium separation here the energy is minimum now when we apply force on the material the interatomic separation increases in that case there is a rise in energy however if we apply loading in the other direction such that the interatomic separation between the two atoms keep on decreasing in that case there is a rise in energy and and very rapid rise in energy if we divide the potential energy curve in two parts one is attractive energy the other is repulsive energy we can see this equation the first is minus a divided by x to the power m this is the attractive energy part. The second is B divided by x to the power n. This is the repulsive energy part. Here <coughs> n is greater than m. So this shows that the decrease in repulsive energy is fast compared to decrease in attractive energy. This is the repulsive energy curve and this is the attractive energy curve. So these two parts, the attractive energy and the repulsive energy finally make a net energy curve and that is shown here now if we look at the force versus displacement curve or stress versus displacement curve we can observe that this curve resembles sinusoidal curve and we plot only the positive part of the curve because we are concerned about tensile loading here so we can write the general equation sigma equal to sigma max sine 2 pi x by lambda. Sigma max is the theoretical strength or the maximum strength this particular point and x is the displacement in atomic spacing and lambda is wavelength of sine wave. For small displacement sine x is nearly equal to x so we can write sigma is equal to sigma max 2 pi x by lambda and we can write this as second equation and if we restrict 
our cells to only brittle elastic solid then from hooke's law we can write sigma equal to elastic modulus into strain and that is equal to elastic modulus displacement divided by the initial separation between the two plane of atom and we can write this equation as third equation now we put equation 3 into equation 2 and therefore we can write e x by a not equal to sigma max multiplied by 2 pi x by lambda and finally we can write sigma max equal to lambda by 2 pi e by a not let's say this is the fourth equation now to solve this equation we first assume that a not is nearly equal to lambda by 2 in that case we can get sigma max equal to e by pi and if we don't want to assume that a not equal to lambda by 2 in that case we can see the area under the curve that is work done per unit area that is equal to energy required to create two fracture surfaces we know that this crack the pre existing flaw in the material when propagate there is formation of two crack two fracture surfaces or here also there are two fracture surfaces so the work done is actually equal to these two fracture surfaces the energy which is required to form these two fracture surfaces so in order to calculate the work done per unit area we will look at the area under the sine curve and that is zero integration from 0 to lambda by 2 sigma dx equal to we know energy required to create two fracture surfaces is 2 gamma s this is the fracture energy of one surface and we are multiplying with 2 as we are observing two fracture surfaces we in this method actually it is assumed that whatever work is done by the material by the external load that is that work has gone to the formation of two fracture surfaces so that's why this equation is used so here we can write 0 to lambda by 2 sigma max sin 2 pi x by lambda dx that is equal to 2 gamma x so this sigma max minus lambda by 2 pi cos 2 pi x by lambda integration from 0 to lambda by 2 that is equal to minus 2 gamma s this will become minus sigma max lambda by 2 pi cos 2 pi by lambda into lambda min by 2 minus cos 0 equal to minus 2 gamma s sorry this is not minus minus sigma max lambda by 2 pi this will become minus 1 minus 1 to gamma s and finally it will become lambda equal to 2 gamma s pi by sigma max and if we put this in equation 4 in this equation then we can write sigma max equal to 1 by 2 pi multiplied by 2 gamma s pi upon sigma max e by a not and this can be written as gamma s e 
upon a naught to the power half this is the equation for theoretical fracture strength if we determine the theoretical fracture strength for glass then we can write the values gamma is 1 newton meter per meter square per unit area and elastic modulus is nearly 100 gpa a naught is nearly equal to 5 into 10 raised to power minus 10 meter then theoretical fracture strength will be equal to we can also write it as e gamma s e a naught so that we can get our results in the form of e so here we can write e 1 by 100 into 10 raised to power 9 multiplied by 5 into 10 raised to power minus 10 to the power half and that will be equal to e 1 by 50 to the power half and this will be e by 7 in general we can write sigma max is nearly equal to e by 10 but in reality in experiments it was observed that the materials have 10 to 1000 times lower fracture stress compared to that of the theoretical cohesive strength or theoretical fracture strength value hope you like the video see you in next video goodbye enjoy your day